real circle. That's our evening today. Read the book, you'll see that uh, it's so insightful that I'm sure all of you will take something out of it once this conversation is over. I hope you pick up a copy of the book. Call upon uh, the book to be unraveled. Now we're going to start the conversation. We're going to start by distinguishing the pretenders from the contenders. And I think I have the right panel with me for doing that. Dr. Singhvi, I'll begin with you first, since you are also uh, someone who uh, writes a lot of columns, you're an observer of politics. Um, in this book, I've made a short list of sorts. So uh, just taking a, we've kept it for uh, politicians under 55. The idea of the book is to take a look at Gen Next in the age of Modi. Uh, at any other time, I think Rahul Gandhi would have had it easier. He may have been, been a prime ministerial contender, but today he, you know, there is a, every text has a context. So Rahul is, I think, trapped in that. But in your mind, can you list three or four of them who you feel can make it to the grade of prime minister? It's always invidious to ask that kind of selection. It's, um, but I'll, I'll nevertheless answer it as frankly as I can. Before that, let me start by congratulating a thinking journalist, a writing journalist, a biographical writing journalist, and a book-length writing journalist. Sometimes some people think these words are oxymorons. Uh, and she's done it in record time, and I think broadly she's got it right. I just saw the subheadings in the book. They are so remarkably accurate in that one-line tag. She's got it broadly right on the inclusions, no major wrongful exclusions. There are one or two exceptions, but otherwise, and the 55 versus 50 age uh, uh, line is not quite, uh, you know, not wrong in the Indian context. She could have had it 50, she's taken a line of 55. Now about this uh, question, uh, first and foremost, you have to decide what is it that makes all of these names, these various photographs here, contenders. My own thinking on a generalization basis is, that it should be somebody with a pan-India, broadly inclusive image, a persona which is not confined to regional, narrower considerations. In the perception of the people at least, somebody with a constant connect in the people's mind, not out of the people's mind for too long. Milind Devra, for example, in that list, very, very talented, but he dropped out of the public sphere for a while, uh, more than two or three years. Now, having said that, as I said, I wouldn't really like to choose. All of them are entitled, all of them are ambitious, anyone will become. But if you were to force me to choose, I would put R.G. Rahul Gandhi, Yogi, Arvind Kejriwal, and Priyanka Gandhi. I would have added Sindhya, and everybody in this room knows my relationship with Aditya Sindhya and his father. Veer is not here, he would tell you about it. He wrote a biography on that also. Uh, I'm not putting him there because I believe that the BJP wants one of their own there. The definition of one of their own is a little different. So he's not quite always one of their own. So having excluded him, I would put RG, Yogi, AK, Kejriwal, and Priyanka Gandhi. Now, this is an arbitrary choice. Let's take Raj Rahul Gandhi. I agree with you entirely in your book that there is a perception that he's not hungry for power. But I think he's a much misunderstood man. He's a person who has had an alternative vision, an alternative thinking. And perhaps he started that alternative vision and thinking before his time, before the time was ripe. For example, he talked about, you know, intra-party elections long, long ago when it was not fashionable to do so. He uh, talked about uh, having internal elections, new faces, changing the guard. So I do believe it was a mistake that he didn't join the governments of two UPAs for 10 years. But having said that, his persistence, his stamina, an extremely clean image, contrary to whatever you might be told, and a lot of idealism. Not necessarily good in Indian politics. Sometimes it makes him bite off more than he can chew. But he, I put him there for these reasons. Yogi, age is on his side, certainly yes. He is, uh, and a generally non-corrupt image. 
I think there are two issues there, and of course we have Mr. Ram Madhav here. One, the Rambo image is a double-edged sword. So the Rambo cuts both ways. The second is clearly a non-inclusive image. Call it exclusivity qua minorities, call it exclusivity qua groups. I think that is where this is the plus and minus balance sheet of Mr. Yogi, whom I put in the list of four. Arvind Kejriwal, and not because I'm representing him at all, uh, <laughs> has great talent. Great talent. He, I believe that in terms of pure communication abilities and immediate instant instinctive connect with the people, there are very few who can match his talent. And he has this also this ability to simplify the most complex of ideas in terms of connecti with the pe connectivity with the people. He again has the age on his side. And as I told Priya on the telephone in a lighter vein, he must have done something right if at one time both the BJP and the Congress were gunning for him. <laughs> and even wanting to perhaps join hands to gun for him. <laughs> Lastly, a highly underestimated name, Priyanka Gandhi. There are very few persons who have that natural charisma and a natural leadership quality and instinctive, the word Priya uses is very, very accurate for her. She's an instinctive connector with people. Uh, I call her a natural leader. She also has a natural ability to take charge. I remember I was in the same room shortly after Madhara Sindhya's untimely death and she and Sonia ji entered together. And about five minutes later, Modi ji and Jetli came, or 10 minutes later. She took charge of the whole devastated scene. It was, of course, a very sad moment, a tragic moment. So she has very special qualities. It's a different matter if, when she decides to take a full plunge or a half plunge, but I would certainly put her right up there. That's a candid answer to a difficult question. <laughs> well. Thank you, Dr. Singhvi, for taking the plunge and at least coming up with a sort of a list. Um, I'll ask Pawan first because since we're all measuring ourselves against the benchmark of uh, Modi, uh, in this uh, list of uh, names, uh, Pawan, do you see anyone with potential? You know, uh, Priya, now for, since for the moment I'm not part of any political party, I don't have to defend the indefensible. So, I can be a little more objective. First of all, I am quite surprised by some exclusions. You haven't put Tejasvi Yadav's son, Akhilesh Yadav's son. Uh, Rahul Gandhi has not married. We'll have to wait for some time. So, uh, you know, these uh, dynastic... I have Prem Kumal Dhumal's son. Ha, well, that's, uh, but the BJP has no dynasties, Ramadaji. But anyway, the point is this, that uh, there are some exclusions. Uh, secondly, I think uh, Mr. Ram Madhav would be very annoyed with this book because he is not included. Uh, Yogi Adit. He was included, but he's past age 55. That is the only <laughs> criteria by which he is. Uh, Yogi Adityanath is there, but I mean, I wonder what Mr. Amit Shah thinks, what Mr. Rajnath Singh, <laughs> but they are all above that age. Uh, so, um, but this is only opening remarks. You see, the thing is this, you have taken a list of people who are prominent in the public sphere, but to conflate it with their ability to assume the role of leadership as a contender on a pan-India basis is an entirely different question because it requires a different approach, a different tenacity, a different determination and a different level of dedication and sacrifice. I am reminded, if you will allow, of, of a line of uh, Rahat Andori, Sur, Suraj ko gali dene ki fashion hai. Suraj ko gali dene ka fashion hai, chunav ke khatir ped lagana padta hai. Phal khanya to sab koi chahte hai, 
पर बेटा पेड़ लगाना पड़ता है तो पॉइंट आई एम रियली मेकिंग इज दैट द लीडर्स एंड देर ऑल पीपल आई मोस्टली नो दे ऑल हैव टैलेंट दे हैव पोटेंशियल कैन दैट टैलेंट एंड पोटेंशियल catapult them into a state of being a contender for power is what i question uh, uh, and that is what i want to if you give me another 2 minutes slightly elaborate upon first of all many of them are uh, more entitled than they deserve by which i mean that with due apologies to my very good friend manu bhai i mean how much uh, optimism can any congress person have to believe that rahul gandhi can deliver <laughs> it, it requires it requires it, requ- it beggars the imagination i mean we have the lok sabha polls and he should be the commander at headquarters he is on a bharat jodo yatra and you know unless it's fantasy you cannot build a first floor of a new building without a foundation now here is a party uh, with for which initially i have great respect <laughs> because i may going to ruffle a few feathers but in private they will all agree with me uh, you see unless there is a structure the congress party's idea as originally conceived is still relevant the congress party's leadership and the party at present is unable to carry that idea forward in electorally effective terms and this has been demonstrated once twice thrice and i don't know how many more chances the party will give him so i rule out rahul gandhi completely as far as uh, priyanka gandhi is concerned i have great respect for her i also know her but she is totally untested i mean i don't know of any party where merely because you are the daughter of uh, the form of president of the party you become one of the top post holders in the congress without having won a single election and to play a role which is so decisive and important at the very apex of the organization so she is untested now the other problem with some of the other contenders is that uh, uh, you know they, they, they are highly localized i mean let's take jayant chaudhary he was a is a is a beneficiary of a very important legacy of the farmers of chaudhary charan singh but you see he's got restricted to the western up belt a couple of seats he's young but he doesn't have the tenacity to continue to expand his base it is something that mayawati did the real revolutionary was kashiram who actually thought that a pan india movement on the basis of the rights of dalits could be conceived of and in numerical terms it does but his legacy was betrayed by mamta uh, by by mayawati and today we have a situation where jain choudhury is also reduced to that so the other problem is that uh, uh, lack of resolve i'm very dear friend of mine for whom i have great respect sachin pilot is there in the book now he has been uh sort of uh, strung along by the congress party and the family at its head for so long and i think it's been unfair to him but uh, he was on the edge of taking a leap by the way in rajasthan our survey shows that on a personal basis he enjoys a popularity of 30% tell that to ashok gehlot <laughs> of course he knows that but for whatever reason he has been denied that he 
actually mm. wanted them to move ahead on his own as you are aware mm. and but you know want to give credit the gandhi family is not where it is without knowing how to handle slightly recalcitrant leaders so to continue give them hope and to prevent them from revolting but so many have mm. now another person i i'll just finish here to just give you an idea is jyoti raditya sindhya again a very dynamic leader but the temptation to make a quick deal rather than a long term goal has put him in a situation where he is in a setup where there is a glass ceiling you unless you come ram madhav ji please correct me if i am wrong i think uh, nirmala sitaraman is the only one was the miracle of politics in the bjp having not come from the rss and in the congress sir the other miracle of politics is a very good friend of mine called rajiv shukla who has never won an election but he is always there uh, uh, as somebody important so jyoti rajitya sindhya has hit a glass ceiling whereas if he had persisted where he was or done what he could to reform the congress party which is of course next to an impossible task <laughs> so he would have probably risen you know he had the age he had the charisma he had the backing he had the lineage he had the grassroots connect so he hasn't done it so lastly i want to end these preliminary remarks by saying that if you are to be a contender you have to be a charismatic face you have to have a vision you have to be able to sacrifice the bjp had that tenacity when it was reduced to two seats in parliament but you will see the minimum amount of hemorrhaging from the party in spite of many offers by the ruling parties they stayed where they were hmm. and they fought and they fought and they fought and today fortunately or unfortunately they are where they are hmm. the point i am making is that you don't you have to have a face a leadership a vision a narrative an organization and a pan india network okay. and the ability for old fashioned street politics unless you have that you will remain prominent in the news but you are not a contender <laughs> okay and this is only the preliminary remarks so i don't know what is next set of remarks is going to be but uh, ram madhav ji basically you know um, we are uh, we call the congress decade when rahul gandhi refused to engage the lost decade for 10 years of upa he stayed out of power so a second rung could not be built you know whether it was sindhya pilot they all had to be you know cut uh, out of power uh, are the modi years also the lost decade because nobody can aspire the second rung is also you know coming up but they hit that proverbial glass ceiling uh, firstly let me congratulate you for i mean revising the book that you published in 2019 thank you my best wishes to you for another revision in 2029 <laughs> which you will obviously do then i have two suggestions for 2029 when you revise it number one please change the title from contenders to rising leaders or something like that <laughs> not pretenders <laughs> uh, uh, pretenders is not fair because they are all leaders in their own right uh my second uh, suggestion would be to to follow up on what mr pavan verma said probably pick up uh, people in the age group of 35 40 uh, that is that will be probably a better choice because uh, prime minister modi ji has announced that 2047 is his target so <laughs> don't don't try to be in a hurry to find contenders uh, they, when there is no vacancy how can you find contenders uh, <laughs> but uh, more importantly i have a, a much more serious point to make in the mm. sense that uh, had you written something like that in in 2003 would you have included manmohan singh at that list had you written something like this in 2012 would you have included modi in this list probably modi would have found his name in uh, 10 or 15 names you included take the ch- names of the chief ministers would you have ever anticipated their names to be the chief ministers of those given states in that i would like to humbly mention to uh, 
our uh, our friends that uh, you know our men not our men i don't think bjp has any such uh, such kind of uh, distinction between the leaders who are in the party i handled uh, india's northeast for 6 uh, 7 years when i was the general secretary of the party you see all the bjp chief ministers have come from congress <laughs> so there is no such distinction nobody really thinks that he is an outsider he should not become that doesn't mean anything that somebody uh, who came can become or cannot become that's not the issue who becomes is uh, something very difficult to predict in the indian scenario i mean i only went back to 2003 but i was told that uh, uh, when uh, mr indra kumar gujral became the prime minister he was woken up at 1 o'clock in the night and told that uh, tomorrow morning you have to take uh, the oath as prime minister he said are you joking but he became the prime minister next day so But half your chief ministers, half your BJP chief ministers <laughs> so, also got the same shock. Uh, so that is that is precise. That is precisely the reason why you should not name it as contenders. So there are many more people. As far as BJP is concerned, some names have been taken up. Uh, I mean, have been taken like uh, Yogi Ji, Amit Shah Ji, etc. I think there are there are of course very senior leaders uh, with huge uh, influence, and BJP has. Uh, several such good leaders in the party and uh, today this uh, discussion about uh, whether they will become contenders for the top post becomes a little premature it's like asking when will your father die <laughs> i have a leader who is delivering we have a leader who is the you know most popular leader in the country this is not the time to discuss about uh, who are the contenders and all that in any case as i said uh, that seat is not vacant for many more years to come i think uh, but yes i would only say that uh, uh, the names that you have taken up are all very important names they are generally uh, looked up to by people in uh, sometimes in the states but also they have a national appeal in a limited sense like omar abdullah all these people have some appeal across i mean outside their states also so good names they are all good leaders so then should we know, uh, not have to now for the next 15 years i think it's decided so then Dr. Singhvi, <laughs> you know, I was just thinking. First of all, I, when I saw the stage, I thought it's you versus us. <laughs> But Mr. Madhav, when you were, you of course would have been a devil's advocate supporting Mr. Madhav. Then I realized I have a mole in my left. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite get it. <laughs> Now, he of course has the advantage of getting all the claps and the laughter because he's not affiliated to a party. i am i am candid to a point but not beyond limits <laughs> now uh, but like a very clever set of lawyers both my non lawyer friends have outdone lawyers today i'll tell you why you trapped me with a question by saying give me three or four names out of your list i gave a honest straightforward answer <laughs> very difficult but candid answer to the best of my ability i picked four both my friends have named nobody <laughs> number 1 number 2 they have therefore impliedly said that all your 12 15 are not going to be prime ministers ever number 3 they should then especially my friend mr varma should have named a 13th or a 14th fellow no name of course i can understand mr madhav's compulsions he cannot name anybody except <laughs> numero uno but the question is your question has to be answered and not like a clever lawyer the question itself can't be rephrased that you said who amongst these now if you have a lot as as churchill said democracy is the worst form of governance but it is the best available one so you have now given a pool i think the exclusions i've done in selecting four are valid exclusions they're all very talented but they don't have an all india persona they do not have an all india permanent connect with the minds he mentioned one name western up it is also i think a drawback and a tragedy of our system that we don't immediately think of somebody from the south for example if stalin had been a little younger i know he's more than 55 but had he been a little younger he would not have figured in your list this is one of our disconnects or maybe you know the chief minister example is not good madhav ji because we are talking of prime minister you picked up a lot of congress chief ministers but the glass ceiling hits when you talk of prime minister and that's the truth but the point i'm making is that you have to have in the next 10 20 30 years at least one or two of these names because beyond these names nobody has suggested another name and in that you can have a wish list 
Now, I would like to know if there is a fifth and a sixth name which is better in your list than the four names I've given. Amit Shah, not in your list, by the way. <laughs> which he has pointed out. Comment about my compulsion. I can understand his compulsion. Two names he took were both were Gandhi's. <laughs> But he also took Kejriwal's name. Tell? <laughs> no, in, in Congress, I said, in Congress only Gandhi's can become the Prime Minister. That's his compulsion. But he took Yogi's name also, to be fair to him. I was wondering if you can take Yogi's name at all. <laughs> actually, 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 I said, I said uh, not Yogi alone, I said even his, he took up Amit Shah's name. And also, he said there are several others, but it's a premature discussion because right now, of course, as I said, there is no such scope at all. Number two, you know, no, no question of anybody from your party in any case. I didn't want to go to that level, but I only said that, you know, there are people in BJP. Uh, Our non-BJP people? No, it's like this. First of all, uh, I admire uh, Mr. Ram Madhavji's faith till 2047 uh, we will have one leader in the bjp towards amrit kal uh, it's a good thought but the real problem is that politics is dynamic and from where a leader arises when in what circumstances is something that is difficult to predict so if i can't name from this list, somebody else. I cannot rule out the fact that there could be. I mean, in 1971, Mrs. Gandhi, after she had defeated Pakistan and created Bangladesh with an absolute majority in parliament and was called, uh, although you deny it now, Durga, by your leader at that time, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, she seemed to be invincible. She had her own Amritkal. But in four years' time, she was compelled to impose the emergency. In 1984, when Rajiv Gandhi won and had the highest majority ever in parliament, even more than his mother and grandfather, he seemed quite invincible. In fact, the opposition was not only decimated, it was embarrassingly decimated. I mean, BJP, and that's where I give your, your party the credit that it had the resolve and the ideological commitment to continue the battle. But it was reduced to two seats. And who could have predicted that by 1989, Rajiv Gandhi would be struggling to survive and then lose an election? So, in 1975, Nobody thought that a rather unwell man, far above the age of 55, living in retirement, in an ashram, in Kadamkua, in Patna, would suddenly wake up and become the catalyst around which a whole galaxy of young leaders gathered, Jay Prakash Narayan. So, I am saying that uh, I, I, I admire your faith your devotion, your sense of loyalty and, and, and your awareness of the consequences if these are not expressed. Uh, but uh, I think that even the BJP should understand a very simple line of Mirza Ghalib. Ghalib khasta ke bagair kaun se kaam band hai? Roye zar zar kya kije hai hai kyo? Nobody is indispensable in politics. And also remember a line which I like to quote again of Ghalib. Har bulandi ke naseebo mein hai pasti ek din. Every pinnacle has the seeds of its own decline in its very genetic makeup. So, we wish Mr. Modi well and wish him a long life. But leadership in this country have great faith. May come from those beyond this list who are tired of the kind of politics we are playing, the kind of amorality, the kind of barren ideological landscape we have. And the fact of the matter is that it is this democracy that will produce it right under your eyes. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I totally agree with you. That democratic process should throw up leaders 
not you, me, and Mr. Singh be sitting here and deciding who should be the next leader. At least that much humility we should have. That's what I said in the beginning. When I said that this democracy threw up so many leaders which we never anticipated that they would become prime minister, they would become chief ministers. When you ridicule uh, this uh, whole imagination about 2047, etc., please remember, this country was ruled for 27 continuous years by Congress from 50 to 77. Indira Gandhi had committed the blunder of uh, imposing emergency in 1975. Had she not done that, as you rightly said, she was at the pinnacle of her uh, popularity and glory. I mean, history has no ifs and buts, I know. But uh, who would have anticipated that a Janata party would come to power in 1974, 1973? Had anybody anticipated it? So I agree that a party could rule for 27 years, give at least 27 years to BJP. Not necessarily to Modi. That will take us to 1941. That will be democratically decided. Uh, exactly. <laughs> no, right now. So when it comes to that, you say democratically decided, but you are ready to roll out names from all parties. I say you name 10 people. There are 20 people. There can be people from the audience. Who knows? <laughs> Somebody from the audience. There's a prime minister prime sitting minister. there. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But, but <laughs> India's democracy has that strength and... You know, who has seen the future? I mean, great leaders, uh, you know, people like Indira Gandhi, as you rightly mentioned, who thought we will never lose. We used to think that in 2004, BJP would certainly come back. It never came back. I mean, anything can happen in Indian democracy. So on that note, can we discuss uh, another person who we haven't discussed, which is, I think is, you know, there's always the disruptor, the X factor, which is Arvind Kejriwal, that factor, a name that you took. Um, he is someone from the way I observed him also, you know, he is the only 24 by 7 politician. He is the only um, uh, non-dynast in that sense who is also willing to put in uh, what it takes. He is matching Modi for headline for headline. He has the same gumption. What he doesn't have is a party or a pan-India organization, which will the opposition rally behind him. He certainly has become the face of the opposition at least for now, after the rest. Well, as I have said, uh, he's a very talented person ambitious, hardworking, and has a remarkable connect. And uh, if you observe him closely, his connect extends to be able to simplifying a concept which is complex and connecting with the people. I think his worst enemies give him that. Now, it's true he doesn't have an organization, but he's exp expanding. I mean, just consider one thing uh, or two things. If as powerful an organization as the BJP, has spent the last year or so with the maximum focus and energies more than any other party in India on the Kejriwal AAP party, both in Delhi, in Punjab and elsewhere. As I said, he must be doing something right. It's as simple as that. Uh, number one. Number two, we had 15 years of Sheila Dixit in Delhi. She faced a central government of the Congress. She faced a central government of the BGP including Sushma Swaraj and very briefly Mandalal Khurana. Have you ever, put your hand on your heart and ask that question, have you ever seen the kind of disruptive behavior on the same constitutional plane between the central government and the state government of Delhi or the NCT? Ever. Irrespective of political color, the constitution hasn't changed. Indeed, Kejriwal has two judgments in his favor after that on the interpretation of the constitution. So there must be, again, either some fear or some apprehension, or some uh, sense of competition. Otherwise, no central government will behave like this for state government with a 67-3 figure. Thirdly, you see today also, and I mean, it's, it's a sub matter, so it's not, it's not one person. You have the top four people of that party, and many more, top four behind, and many more on the scanner. Which other party has suffered that? So, as I said, if there is a threat perception of that degree, there must be something there. It's a question you have to ask yourself. Now, what happens in the future, in the womb of the future, nobody knows. I'm not talking legality. I'm appearing in all those cases. That doesn't matter. I'm sufficiently objective not to be clouded by that. And I'm not talking law. I'm not talking, you know, merits. I'm just saying that as the political question you asked, it is certainly something which should make you sit up and think. Uh, Mr. Singhvi is Kejriwal's lawyer, obviously he will say good things about him. <laughs> my, my simple point is, 
Mr. Kejriwal is a very overrated politician. He is a darling of sections of media because Rahul Gandhi is not working. Probably this guy will work. That is the whole hope. Uh, with, with that hope, you hype him. However much you hype him, you can only talk about Delhi and Punjab. Everywhere else, that party came such a cropper. No other state. Uh, but you still say that he is the challenge to Modi? Where is that question coming? I mean, we have actually given up on your own leaders now. You think that Kejriwal will challenge him? No Congress leader has now that ability to challenge. He will challenge. Where are we heading? He is very overrated. He had his constituents. He has got his own support base in Delhi. Fair enough. There are such leaders in many states. There was this mention about Mr. Stalin. Stalin had his base in Tamil Nadu. To the extent that they are strong regional leaders, fine. But to create an impression that, you know, he is above even your own party leaders. He will tomorrow go and challenge this government. No, that's not going to happen. I don't think that's a very real assessment. Assess him correctly. Hmm. He is a strong leader in Delhi, no doubt. We faced him twice. We could not defeat him twice. We will see the third election when it comes in 2027. That's how he should go, but not a contender for that top post. There's another but election uh, before that, the Delhi election. Uh, uh, I just want to say that one factor you have ignored mm -hmm. in this is that if there was to be any real contender, he would be fighting not only the BJP, he would be fighting all the other agencies combined that are today parts of the BJP apparatus. <laughs> and that's the truth. I mean, sorry, I, I, I say this. Please don't take it in a, it's an objective discussion. And I, these days I can be objective. 33% uh, of Mr. Modi's cabinet, as per their own declaration, at the time of their nomination for elections, have cases of starting with cheating, starting with uh, decoity, and attempt to murder. Some of them have 21 FIRs, of which half are related to attempt to murder. You don't have a single inquiry by any agency against them. Whereas, as against in the opposition, even if a contender were to emerge, I'm not such a mole, you know. <laughs> even, if an op even if your contender were to emerge, the... the, the the sheer insurmountable challenges of a government in power which has blurred the line between rectitude and vendetta is a very serious issue today. Uh, I mean, uh, there are leaders who join the BJP and Ram Vadaji, please don't attempt to deny it. I mean, against whom you've carried on crusades of corruption. They join the BJP and it's a cliche now to talk of a washing machine. It's a laundry factory. <laughs> I mean, everybody, uh, everybody, the cases are dropped. My good friend, somebody with whom I had lunch on a one-to-one -one basis two days before he moved to the BJP, Praful Patel. He joins your side. Case is closed. So, I'm just saying these are huge problems for any contender to contend with. Because today, I'm sorry, and Mr. Singh, you can elaborate on this. Thanks to certain laws, especially the UAPA and the PMLA and Section 45 of the PMLA, the process has become the punishment. The, uh, well, there's always Dr. Singhvi there, if anybody uh, gets know, arrested. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm just adding a couple of points since... Pawan is finally redeeming himself. Uh, two or three interesting points. Uh, one, you know, it's not just the narrowness of what we are discussing that isko pakar liya, kal isko chhod diya. The weaponization of these laws bodes ill, very seriously ill for India. We have in this country the difference between India and Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, every one of our late neighbors is that incoming and outgoing regimes don't gun for each other. It started in one southern state by two honchos. It then spread to the east. It then went to the Battle of the Sadas in the north. 
and then it went to the east briefly, left and the new district. Barring these three, even in states, and certainly not in the center, did you have vendetta politics. You are inaugurating a very negative era of Indian democracy. Sometime you will go. Imagine the successor. Howsoever restrained and mature he is, imagine his reaction. And it will unleash a never-ending cycle, which is terrible for democracy. And we haven't had it for 75 years, barring the exceptions I've given you. Number two, uh, the BJP is right when they trot out statistics to confuse you. Out of 100 cases, only about 10% are about political figures on the PMLA. But you don't ask the second question. Of those 10, 9 or 9.5 or 9.9% 9 .9 involve opposition leaders. The rest are non-political. They are businessmen or others. But of every case touching politics, 99% or 98% are only opposition leaders. So the laundry factory is not our imagination. And third, in the recent past year, the elections, the number of crossovers and clean chits followed by Rajya Sabha memberships or Rajya Sabha memberships followed by clean chits, it has never happened in Indian politics. In fact, I compliment and admire the brazenness which is done. It's amazing. Not and even in Indira Gandhi's time. Democracy. Not even in Indira Gandhi's time. Not this, Indira, let's say, let's accept it. What, what does my friend, not he, but his, his colleague say, there's an emergency. I accept emergency as an aberration. I've written a PhD on emergency. My PhD is on emergency powers and legal analysis. Let's accept it as an aberration. It is not something which is, uh, now, if it's an aberration, it was a constitutional aberration, constitutionally regulated, constitutionally circumscribed. Today, where is the circumscribing? Where is the regulation? It is much more invidious. Just because the Korea calls itself the Democratic Republic of North Korea, does it become democratic? So you need to be careful about these, you know, quickies. Oh, yes, of course, Mrs. Gandhi must have done some excesses. A lot of people under her must have done some excesses. So let's accept it. Does that give you a license to having 10 years of a growing sense of uh, intolerance, narrowness, exclusivity, fear factor. Put your hand on your heart and say, many of you are bureaucrats, you are bureaucratic friends, many of you have judicial connections. Has there been the degree of fear in India ever, which is there today? Never. And if you don't say it, you are living, you have to smell the coffee then. No, firstly, most of the laws and these institutions were created by your government, not by the BJP government. U, uh, PMLA and UAPA were created earlier. One. Secondly, secondly. Uh, that all the amendments which we are talking about now, and I have some knowledge of this, are 2016, 2018, and 2019 amendments. 90 percent of that is that. Please check and, and also brought in as money bills, so that they don't have to go to the Raj Sabha. Oh, so, uh, okay. uh, exactly. So, uh, yes. Uh, sir, sir, sec secondly. Okay. Sec sec secondly, hmm. uh, you know, when we were in the opposition, we used to call CBA as the Congress Bureau of Investigation. Uh, we had our own complaints about that organization. I know, I know uh, how a very false case of Hindu terror has been foisted on us and on, on some of our people. It was a totally baseless case just to create, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a religious equivalent of the jihadi Islamist terror that was spreading in the country. You created a bogey of Hindu terror using uh, your own agencies those days. I, I directly handled those agencies, those officers used to tell us that yes, we are not able to really find any evidence, but we have to, you know, continue this uh, investigation. You did all these things. This was, I'm talking about 2006 to 2010, 11, 12. 
so misusing a particular then we went to the judiciary we got whatever uh, you know relief we have to get from the judiciary what can i do if you can't get a bail for arvind kejriwal from the judiciary is it my mistake that means the case is solid that means the allegations are serious yes if there are any any wrong doings on the side of the agencies how faith in judiciary or say that judiciary is also you can't trust this judiciary also say that publicly you don't believe in any institution you don't believe in any agency okay you don't have to believe in the government because it is from another party by the another party but if you don't believe in even judiciary and say that no it's all draconian and only government is running everything no india is not north korea please don't compare we are much better much more democratic much more open society with an independent functional judiciary how faith in that relief will come it took 6 years for us to get out of that uh, bogus uh, uh, very insidious type of propaganda of hindu terror it uh, took us uh, a very long time okay last round before we uh, moving away from uh, arvind kejriwal and pmla uh, the messaging if the opposition doesn't have a face uh, dr singh we at least you should have a good message that you know uh, you've come up with a good manifesto there's no doubt i mean messaging narrative infrastructure cadre at the bottom these are all very important down to the booth level nobody saying that you just put a leader or a name and you go and win elections i have also no messaging. hesitation in saying that they have a remarkable mascot in mr modi his uh, is his whole persona is is more larger than life there's no doubt about it but uh, to your question in terms of content and message i don't think we have made any big blunders we have got fairly comprehensive messaging the problem is of various other factors there is of course a problem of having a very strong leader in mr modi he has caught the imagination of the public of india there is equally the problem of fund funds you have to go down to the level and see the difference in funds elections in india you like it or not depend on funds the ratio is all the parties in india put together multiplied by 3 and it is well well below the bjp total and that is only the declared one so so i think we 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 have a number of factors so messaging is of course there i think we worked hard at the manifesto we disagree but to just call it a muslim league manifesto is i leave it to you to judge you have to read parts of it you know if, if if you talk of inclusiveness if you talk of certain left of center views it doesn't become a muslim league manifesto nor does it become a cpm manifesto so i think that is part of mr Mes- mr modi's very strong style of messaging it doesn't make it the truth and all that we are talking about of course can be dealt with by mr modi in one sentence which mr madhav has not said this is all lutians delhi's nonsense <laughs> uh, to that there is no answer if rationality is bad then lutians delhi is also bad this khan market gang is very bad <laughs> you know i'll tell you why because uh, people like us who are often put in that bracket uh, mr madhav was right and frankly the congress party cannot deny it there was misuse of agencies in the past also but uh, many of us did not realize that we were wrong in our realization that the bjp is a party with a difference and today that khan market gang is wondering if they are all the same anyway that's a part <laughs> but the real point i want to end on is that uh, it's not only about contenders from outside hmm. i think that any contender from within the bjp also must tread very warily because as mr ramadev said there is absolutely no vacancy till 2047 <laughs> so uh, the moment somebody emerges or is likely to emerge uh sometimes action can be very quick mr madhav himself is aware of it so uh, you know uh, the point i am making is that uh, there is uh, uh, for the first time in my life and i was very close to mr atul bihari vajpayee and i have great respect for him and i have also respects of certain aspects of the rss i do not demonize veer uh, veer savarkar there are aspects which you have to understand and we have had discussions on it but uh, uh, today uh, i have never ever seen a 
national political party so publicly marginalized by its own leader by failing to ever mention it everything is one person's guarantee the party doesn't figure sir and it's happened for the first time in the bjp which was always a collegial party uh, i i may not fully agree with that analysis of yours about the party and the leadership i would probably end by saying uh, in a slightly broader and larger context uh, we have entered a totally different era in our in our lives it's a very technologically driven era democratic processes have to undergo certain change you can't stick to your conventional political practices and uh, jump up and down that you, we are not getting space and all that this is the era of technology this is the era of uh, new modes of communication you have to be you know you have to be using all those things you have to be appealing to the larger sections of the society that is where the leadership of bjp has great advantage over other parties while you are stuck in your caste politics you are stuck in your family politics bjp has gone far far ahead it is not just the leadership alone leadership is important for bjp but may i tell you that in this country we have about uh, about 1 uh, 1 million plus polling stations the bjp has got its uh, its units in 850000 polling stations why are you not taking it into account why do you think it is only because of modi modi no modi is important and we have entered in an era in the in the whole world not just in india please remember of dominant democracy dominant leadership i am not saying dominant democracy in the sense that you have to have a dominant idea and you have to have a dominant leadership then you have to have that kind of uh, you know following you have to create why this much hated right wing parties are coming back to power in country after country in europe because today's politics is about a dominant idea a dominant leadership and a dominant way of reaching the people that is the new politics today if you are not extem to that politics don't complain modi ji don't complain about modi ji i don't complain about bjp bjp is well versed about the new politics of the day it is putting it in uh, action that is why the results are coming modi ji modi ji's leadership is paramount but the party's organizational structure and the idea the cultural idea that touches the minds and hearts of millions and millions of indians is also equally important that forces you to do japa in public rallies that forces you to show your genevo please remember that idea don't dismiss that idea it's a combination new politics thank you thank you all for this uh, conversation in fact actually what are we arguing about because you know what they say that the congress nehru has now become congress modi they all have joined you anyway but uh, on that note i thank my panelists for a very feisty debate and my audience i mean i see all of you from round table cover story we women want thank you all for coming and for being a part of my day thank you so much and a very happy new year thank you For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.